When you open Excel and Airtable, you see a blank spreadsheet that you can start typing data into immediately. It's been argued that the sheer convenience factor of that design choice is why Excel is the most widely used spreadsheet software ever, and why Airtable has grown to be used by 80% of the Fortune 100, including Amazon, Netflix, Nike, and IBM. Aside from that one excellent design choice, these two pieces of software are very different. I'm going to go over their differences in detail. Since many people use Google Sheets and Excel interchangeably, I will also make mentions to Sheets. By the end of the video, you'll have a clear set of criteria to use when choosing which platform is best for you. But let's zoom out for a minute and think critically about why we use any of these tools in the first place. Most uses for spreadsheets fall into two groups, data storage and storytelling. If you want to keep track of retail inventory, real estate listings, or a million other common use cases, you create a list with the item name in the first column and more characteristics to the right. This probably covers most of the typical uses for spreadsheets. If your goal is to use the data to tell a specific story, you might create a model instead. People create very complicated models that calculate things like the probability that an asteroid is going to hit the Earth. But a model could be much simpler than that. Take a basic budget for throwing a bake sale. The budget might track different expense categories like food, utensils, and drinks. You might also have a separate table for who's scheduled to bake and sell the food and how long they're going to be there or to calculate the value of time that the volunteers have contributed. These different types of information are all organized on the same sheet to make a model. A model is just a grouping of information that tells a story. This distinction is important to our comparison because in general, Airtable is a much better tool for storing data while spreadsheets are still easier to use for modeling. And since most of what people typically do with spreadsheets is data storage, I think that many folks would be better suited to use Airtable as their primary tool. Technically, Airtable is a database or a database spreadsheet hybrid. Database. Sounds boring, right? Until now, databases have been the unsexy and hidden code that powers pretty much everything on the internet. Any app or website is really just a combination of a database in the back and a pretty interface on the front. Airtable is a pretty database. There's good reason why no one uses spreadsheets like Excel as the back end for their app. Databases are much better at storing information. They keep things neat and organized, they're fast, and they're extraordinarily easy to sort and filter as needed. In Airtable, a column is called a field. You can create drop-down fields, checkbox fields, phone number fields, and use any of those fields to sort your information. Because you must specify the field type, it forces you to be organized. No more columns with a mix of text, numbers, email addresses, etc. Databases also allow relationships between records. Linked records allow you to show the connection between a product and a brand, for example, and then use that link to look up information. If you use lots of VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH, or some IF functions in your spreadsheets, database relationships will be a game changer for you. See my video on linked records to learn more about that. Spreadsheets don't allow relationships between fields, but you can sort and filter by creating a table from your data. It's a far inferior system, but it gets the job done. If you use spreadsheets for storing data, you should definitely try Airtable. When you do, spreadsheets will look like horse and buggies at the entry of the automobile. Slow, messy, and soon to be irrelevant. Airtable has a long head start, but it isn't the only company to realize this. All the big players are developing consumer-friendly database apps, including Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Airtable and Google Sheets are both cloud-based. You can store Excel docs in the cloud, but it usually lives in a computer. In my opinion, cloud-based tools are essential for collaboration. They make it possible for multiple people to edit a document without trading a million versions over email and worrying about which one is the most up-to-date. Airtable, on the other hand, has the opposite problem. There isn't a way to store Airtable documents offline. They only exist on the internet. So far, the only time that that has been a problem for me is when I want to work on something on an airplane, but it depends on your access to the internet while you're working. Maturity. Excel has been around for more than 40 years and Google Sheets has been around for 15. They've had plenty of time to work out the kinks and also to develop an incredible library of functions, including many that perform complicated statistical and financial calculations. Airtable will continue to add new functions, but it will take time for it to reach the depth that's available in Excel. For now, there's an active online community where folks regularly share their own custom formulas to replace most missing Excel functions. Integrations and automation. 
Airtable has some incredible automation features that allow you to send an email to a full list of contacts, sync with the Google Calendar, and a growing number of other actions. Both Google Sheets and Airtable have open APIs, which allow glue of the internet type automation services like Zapier and Integromat to connect them to even more services. Excel doesn't have this functionality. If you're looking for a spreadsheet app with more automation and integrations, take a look at Smartsheet. That's my roundup of the main differences between Excel, Google Sheets, and Airtable. I use both Excel and Airtable daily, and while I tend to use Excel less and less as time goes on, I don't see giving it up anytime soon. Given the amount of time that you can save with either of these tools, they're both worth keeping in your toolbox. Hopefully this video has helped you understand when to use one or the other. If you have a different take, let me know in the comments, and hit subscribe to learn more about using technology to get things done.